decision making process concerning inscription, selection, or approval of nominations, proposals, and requests. This item was added on our agenda at the request of State Party of Spain in accordance with Rule 9.2c of the Rules of Procedure the Committee. Document 8 provides background information on the decision-making process concerning the inscription of elements on the list of intangible cultural heritage in need of safeguarding and on the representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity, as well as proposals on the register of best safeguarding practices and the approval of international assets. In particular, the first part of the document explains on how the draft decisions are prepared. The second part clarifies the process load in the my predecessors decisions concerning nominations, proposals, and requests. Considering that this item touches upon the ruling of the chairperson, I would like to provide some background information before I open the floor for our debate. As we may, as we may know, nominations to two lists of the convention, proposals to the of best safeguarding practices and requests for international assistance greater than US dollars 100,000 are evaluated by the evaluation body, which is a consultative body of the committee. The evaluation body presents its recommendations to us for each file based on its evaluation in the form of draft decisions. Before these draft decisions reach us, each member of the body individually evaluates each file to be examined by the committee. Subsequently, the body meets to undertake a joint evaluation. During the joint evaluation, the body reaches consensus on each specific criterion of each file. In other words, the body functions as a collective entity which speaks with one voice. It's worth underlining that candidates to the evaluation body are proposed by us, state parties, and elected by us, members of the committee. Also, membership to the body is evenly distributed geographically and between experts and non-governmental organizations. This allows them to avoid geographical or institutional bias in their recommendations. During recent committee sessions, my predecessors have followed specific for procedures for decision-making concerning nominations, proposals, and requests. To establish consensus for decisions concerning nominations, proposals, or requests, my predecessor chairpersons of the recent sessions have sought actively voiced expressions of support in order to take a positive view of amendments. They have therefore considered silence as a sign of support for the original recommendation by the evaluation body, rather than as a support for a proposed amendment to a draft decision. The reasoning behind this different approach concerns the fact that the work is entrusted by the committee to the evaluation body considerable time, investment, and in-depth work carried out by the body over several months, as well as the collegial way in which its recommendations are elaborated. I would like to highlight that the rules of procedure of the committee are silent on the issue of adopting decisions by consensus. That is prerogative of the chairperson only. Even though it's up to the chairperson to establish the practice, I would like to have the opinion of dear committee members as I wish to make sure we are all clear and to best facilitate the conduct of our debate. I also wish to emphasize that the good conduct of our debates is also the responsibility of each member of the committee our rules of procedure include 
provisions that give you this responsibility, for example, in calling a point of order. Dear colleagues, before opening the floor for comments, allow me to give the floor to Spain to briefly explain to the committee why they wished to add this item to our agenda of this year. Spain, the floor is yours. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. A los esfuerzos por incluir eh, este excelente borrador que nos permite debatir un tema fundamental como es el procedimiento de decisión para las inscripciones, aprobaciones de las candidaturas. España considera que es parte del espíritu de las convenciones de la UNESCO privilegiar decisiones por consenso. En este sentido, es cierto que existe una práctica que es necesario aclarar sobre cómo se construye ese consenso y el papel fundamental que el presidente del comité desempeña. En este sentido, nosotros creemos que el papel, la labor del presidente necesita unos parámetros generales claros y, como se ha expuesto por la delegación de Palestina, hay que tener claro qué significado tiene el silencio y qué peso tienen las intervenciones, especialmente a la hora de revertir una propuesta que ha sido presentada por el órgano de evaluación. España considera que es necesario, en aras a una mayor transparencia, a una previsibilidad, a que no haya discriminaciones o eh, posible arbitrariedad entre candidaturas y otras entre unos comités y también su composición y que los Estados, miembros del comité y no miembros del comité, tengan unas, eh, una claridad en sus expectativas a la hora de que sus, las candidaturas sean evaluadas. Por eso decidimos pedir que hubiera un debate sobre saber, como ha sido expuesto, qué papel tiene el silencio de, las, de, las, de los miembros del comité a la hora de sumarse o no al consenso. Y como ha sido expuesto, si estamos en un ejercicio o no de armonización o de cierta coherencia entre las prácticas de unos comités y otros, si queremos ir en ese camino o si queremos mantener la práctica. En todo caso, lo que España quería era que hubiera un debate y que supiéramos en este comité y en los próximos cuál es esa práctica para tener una previsibilidad, para evitar arbitrariedades y para saber cómo preparar mejor nuestras candidaturas, cómo trabajar mejor con el comité y hacer que con el comité, con la secretaría, la aplicación de la convención sea coherente y uniforme. Muchísimas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you very much, Spain, for these brief explanations. I would like to reiterate, dear committee members, the importance of conducting our debate in a coherent and transparent way. And I would like to assure you that I shall do my best to guide our discussion on item 10 when we examine nominations, proposals, and requests. Uh, without further ado, I now open the floor. Does any state member wish to take the floor? I recognize Cyprus. Cyprus, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je vois qu'on a commencé déjà le débat sur l'examen de dossier par le comité. Moi, je voulais simplement parler un petit peu avant l'examen des dossiers par le comité. C'est-à-dire, quand un État il envoie un dossier pour évaluer, le secrétariat, tout d'abord, il les regarde, il les transmet au, à l'État s'il si juge que techniquement il manque des informations. Et après, s'il a toutes les informations par l'État, il l'envoie à l'évaluation. Simplement, l'organe d'évaluation, il donne son rapport à la fin pour qu'il les transmette au comité. 
Ce que je propose, ce serait, je pense, mieux que l'organe d'évaluation puisse avoir un échange avec l'État membre qui soumet euh, son dossier. Parce qu'on arrive à la fin, nous avons beaucoup de, 